Before cutting the ribbon to officially open Auschwitz, Hitler loudly exclaimed, OK, let's get this bitch's baps out and push her up the runway, before tucking into a foot-long cocaine baguette. Actually, none of that happened, but seeing as how this is the year of the alt-right and alternative facts, I thought I'd combine the two for the intro to this video about one of the alt-right's biggest figureheads. Milo Yiannopoulos. It's not been a good year for poor Milo. Up until recently, he'd been making a very lucrative career for himself, being as right-wing as Rush Limbaugh and as gay as your dad. But then, last week, it all came crashing down. After a 16-year-old girl from Canada made a video that showed interview footage in which Milo seemed to defend or at best downplay child abuse, that video got picked up by a conservative Twitter group called Reagan Battalion, who shared it around and Milo's career and reputation was destroyed, seemingly beyond repair, within literally a few hours. His book deal was cancelled, which was probably a relief to many of his fans because now they didn't have to go to the hassle of learning how to read. He was forced to resign from Breitbart after several writers threatened to walk out if he wasn't fired, which is kind of like being asked to leave Stormfront for being too politically incorrect. And most tellingly, he was no platformed by those special liberal snowflakes over at CPAC because they didn't want a man who advocated sexual abuse speaking at the event. That role was filled by the president. Obviously, this isn't the first time that Milo has got into hot water for saying something horrid, but this was the first time he'd pissed off his own team, who up until then were okay with his deplorable attitude and hateful opinions. And seeing as his star is fading and I love kicking a man when he's down, I thought it'd be fun to see him off with a video and ask this question of his supporters. How much were they willing to tolerate before they finally pulled the butt plug on Milo Yiannopoulos' career? I'm Dick Coughlin from whatacantyouare.com and here are four times that Milo Yiannopoulos was a total bum splat. Number one, he ripped off his own fans. I can't appreciate why someone would find Milo Yiannopoulos appealing, but that's only because my mother didn't drink varnish when she was pregnant with me. But even if you are a fan who agrees with the things that he says, surely we can both agree that nobody should be stealing money from the very people who support them. On that note, I would like to point out that I do have a Patreon account, which is linked below, which you can donate to now. In 2016, Milo jokingly set up a website called The Privilege Group grant that was basically a backwards version of affirmative action, intended to specifically help white males get through college. Because anyone who actually goes to a college campus these days knows full well that the racial demographic across the board is as black as Newgate's knocker. But apparently lots of people took interest in this and Milo, realising that his fan base were a bunch of gullible ring nuts, decided to seize on this opportunity and rinse the fuckers for all he could. He held a live YouTube stream to raise money for it that was hugely successful, raising over $250,000, or one advance for a book deal. It'd take me too long to go into too much detail to it, full details will be linked below, but suspicions were raised after it was noticed that the website had no application option on its menu. This led to the discovery that money was being deposited in the account of a company owned by Milo called Caligula Limited, and it is to Milo's credit that only he could sully the good name of a man who fucked all three of his sisters. The company was dissolved in May 2016, along with the money, but the former director of the grant did produce a document that shows that the money was wired to Milo's bank accounts. No grants have ever been issued, but as much as Milo likes to bang on about snowflakes, I suspect he spent this money on a very different type of snow. Number two, he's a talentless hack who steals other people's work. This might shock some of you out there, but if someone's entire legacy is built on being a massive dickhole who just says shocking things for the sake of being shocking, it's safe to assume that they probably ain't very good at anything substantial. Before he earned a living being a virtuous troll, Milo had already tried his hand at writing poetry. Under the name Milo Andreas Wagner, and in conjunction with I shit you not Donkey Punch Publishing, he produced Eskimo Papoose. But it soon became clear that much of the text was lifted wholesale from lyrics written by Tori Amos. This is ironic given that Amos is a very outspoken feminist. Milo, of course, claimed that the whole thing was a big joke, and whilst the book did thank Amos for inspiring him, there's no in the book that suggests it's meant to be taken as satirical. But at least Amos is a talented songwriter, so stealing songs from her at least makes sense. But the book also contains lyrics lifted from songs by Britney Spears and Mariah Carey, and even contains some lines that were taken from episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. However, it becomes quite clear as to why Milo plagiarised other people's work once you read some of his original prose, which I shall now give you a dramatic reading of. He told me to pray that God would forgive, but would God forgive him for what he did in my mouth? 
No, Milo, but when you appear on the Joe Rogan show in a few years, you definitely will. He goes on. No more wire hangers, we have been warned. Verily, in truth, thus he spake. And then he sat down, and amongst them stood Kaltas, son of Threstor, by the far, by far the white... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My father, the many other, the usher, the lone wolf. <laughs> If William Blake were alive today, he'd be shitting it right now. Number three, he's a transphobic shithead. Milo quite brazenly flashed his transphobic chops when he appeared on the HBO show Real Time, claiming he was just concerned about the safety of the children and keeping them away from sexually confused weirdos. Bill Maher agreed with him and said that this was not unreasonable, because Bill Maher is a piece of shit too. But I digress. Despite what Bill Maher says, this is completely unreasonable, considering there are zeros examples of people being molested in toilets by anyone who is transgender. But ironically, there are quite a few examples of Republican politicians doing that very thing. Here are some statements that Milo has made about transgender people, and whilst I read these, I want you to ask yourself, how many of these statements could apply to Milo Yiannopoulos? They are deeply mentally damaged. They are failed by a liberal establishment obsessed with making them feel good about themselves. They are gay men dressing up for attention. They are obsessed with being victims and being given special rights. Trannies can never be women or men for the small slice of women insane enough to desire to give up female privilege. Trans activists are authoritarian bullies. They have no place in the gay community. Time to get them out. Trans equality is ultimately regressive and actually hostile to the goals of women and gay men. He even promoted a petition urging various gay rights organisations to drop the T from LGBT. He cites statistics from the Williams Institute that detail the high rates of suicide among transgender women. He attributes this epidemic to depression caused by having their genitals mutilated. No, Milo. No. It's because of crusty old second-hand Smeg and Toe Jam flavoured condom-faced fucks like you. That's why they're depressed, you pathological asshole. And finally, he hates gay people. Remember that thing I just quoted Milo on saying that trans equality is ultimately regressive and actually hostile to the goals of women and gay men? Well, it turns out he's not averse to a bit of gay hostility himself. Despite bringing up the fact that he's gay every five fucking minutes and even naming himself the dangerous faggot, it turns out that in the past, Milo has said one or two things about gay people that are so rampantly homophobic they would make Fred Phelps blush. Here is a list of things that Milo yanking off kids a lot have said about gay people. Gays have been told for 30 years that they were born this way. That's a lie. Born This Way was invented by the gay lobby as a runaround of the religious right. The religious right was saying that homosexuality was a sinful lifestyle choice, and then the gay lobby invented the gay gene. The thought that I might influence my child towards a lifestyle choice guaranteed to bring them pain and unhappiness, however remote that chance may be, is horrifying to me. That's why, quite simply, I wouldn't bring a child up in a gay household. Is being homosexual wrong? Something somewhere inside me says yes. I would love to be cured. Who wouldn't want to be cured? Of course I want to be cured. I've tried to pray the gay away. I think for a variety of reasons, most gay people, if they were honest, would choose not to be born homosexual. Most of the reason I went gay is so I didn't have to deal with nutty broads. Imagine how much worse they're going to get when the passive-aggressive manipulation tactic stopped working because the guy can't get himself off with a thinner, hotter robot anytime he wants to. Since gay people have been so en Endlessly praised, flattered and catered to by the media and politicians, I've lost interest in sleeping with men. I want to feel oppressed again. That's why, from today, I'm going to make a go of being straight. So, he chose to be gay, he chose not to be gay, he claimed he would love to change, and most people change, but they would. most people would choose not to have been born, he claimed that it's more nature than nurture, which is it, Milo? For want of a better term, pick a fucking side. It's ironic that Milo rails so hard against transgender people for being confused about their identity when it's clear he's the most confused person of all. And therein lies the truth about Milo Yiannopoulos. When he hates gay people, it's okay, I'm gay. When he's racist, it's okay, I have a black boyfriend. When he offends Jews, it's okay, my mother was Jewish. When he defends child abuse, it's okay, I was abused as a child. It seems out of all the people that Milo Yiannopoulos hates, the one he hates the most 
is himself. And that's my list. Did I miss any out? Tell me in the comments below. And don't forget to rate, share and subscribe this video. I'm Dick Coughlin from What A Cunt You Are. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.